I need you to raise your hands. Yep, raise your hands. If you can relate to hearing the following phrases growing up. Can't you see your mates? Does so so and so have two heads? Is that what your mates are doing? Why can't you be like so so and so? Or as my wifey parents would say, if you be some picking, you no go do that kind thing. I got a lot of that growing up. Hi, my name is Davina Oriaki. I'm an independent singer songwriter, amongst other things, and now I'm a podcaster. And this this is the Life, Love, and Affirmations podcast with me, Davina Oriaki. Thank you all so much for all the love and the listens, the streams, the downloads, the shares on the previous episode. It means the world to me. I see all the messages. I see all the tweets, the reposts on Instagram. It warms my heart. I ask that you keep them coming. Continue to share. Continue to use the hashtag, hashtag double L-A with Davina when you're talking about the podcast. In this episode, damn, I have so much to unpack in this episode. I will be talking about how I deal, or rather, how I am dealing with self-comparison. This is inspired by my journey as an independent artist. As you may know or may not know, the music industry is very cutthroat. It's very vain and heavily saturated, so it's very easy to compare oneself with other artists. And I'm sure to you listening, you are in your own arena, industry, career path, community where self-comparison seemingly is just part of the order of the day. In the first segment, I will be talking about my personal struggle with self-comparison, what self-comparison is and some reasons behind why we may compare ourselves with others so easily. In the second segment, I'll be talking about the steps I have taken and am taking to deal with self-comparison. Let's get right into it. Let's start off with definitions. You know how I do. I like to just define what I'm talking about first. So as to lay the foundation for the entire episode. But I would like to first start off with the definition of self-esteem. Because truly, if your self-esteem is shaky, self-comparison becomes so easy. So self-esteem is confidence in one's own worth or abilities. Now, self-comparison, which I think is synonymous to social comparison, according to social psychologists, this is a state that in the absence of objective measures for self-evaluation, we compare ourselves to others to find out how we are doing. And just looking at that, as it is written you know, across my screen, I'm just thinking, wow, how unfair is that? Because no two people are the same. And I'm sure you've all heard, you know, comparison is the thief of joy. But I'd like to add to that and say comparison is also the thief of confidence. We lose confidence in ourselves when the value of our worth and abilities is based on how we measure up in comparison to other people. And I'm just I have to talk about my own personal experience because the self-comparison addiction that I had was driving me insane. As I've said, I'm an independent singer-songwriter and I started my musical journey seriously and professionally back in 2017. When I released my debut LP, Love to Immortal, so I'm talking like a few days after I released it, a few weeks after release, a few months after release, even a couple of years after release, I felt so suckish about how it was doing because I was focusing on the fact that my streaming numbers were so low in comparison to other artists who were releasing projects projects within the same time frame. So from 2017 to late 2018. When I tell you I was so discouraged, I kept thinking that I sucked. As an artist, I thought that I just wasn't good enough. I wasn't talented. Not because anyone told me that. I got the total opposite of that. I got a lot of critical acclaim and praise. But because my numbers weren't matching up to the numbers of other people's streams on their projects, I just felt like I wasn't good enough. So I was basing the worth of my artistry and I was basing my talent and abilities as an artist on vanity metrics. What, ma- what made matters worse is I devoted 
hours of my time scrolling through people's timelines, checking out which celebrity endorsed their music, who they're working with, how many streams they got that week and how quickly they got it, what number they were on the charts, how many followers they were having on any platform from Instagram to Twitter to Spotify, how many likes their photos were getting on Instagram, how many retweets they were getting. And it was driving me insane. It was driving me absolutely nuts. Aside the struggles that came with the following years after my release that really slowed down the pace at which I could create and release music, I was very discouraged from continuing because I thought I wasn't good enough. I ignored the messages I would get from people who really took their time, bless them, and wrote paragraphs of how much my music speaks to them. I forgot about the celebrities that did find out about me through that debut LP and started following me religiously as a result of it. I didn't focus on the growth in my listeners and followers as an individual artist, which was very much evident there was a growth spurt because I was too busy focusing on other people's success, successes and their vanity metrics. So I was using other people's successes as a yardstick to my growth. And now that I look back on that, that is so unfair. And that is so, it's not objective at all. And in the um, in the definition of social comparison or self-comparison, according to social psychologists, it's the absence of objective measures for self-evaluation. When we don't have objective measures for our own self-evaluation, we start to look at other people and what they're doing and use that as a yardstick for ourselves. So why was I comparing myself so much? And in fact, why do we compare ourselves so much? It, it's actually mind baffling to me. And well, according to studies, I did some Googling because, you know, Google. Um, according to studies, 10% of human thought is based on comparison. And that is because it helps us understand things much better. The same way um, humans understand things by categorizing, generalizing and boxing. Same with comparison, because when you put certain things in a box, you feel like you have a basis to compare them on. But here are some reasons I've come to realize that were behind my addiction to self-comparison. And I use that word addiction because it was very addictive for me. I used to check on people's Spotify numbers on a daily basis. True story. I have overcome that, which I will talk about later on in the podcast. But for now, I want to talk about the reasons why we may compare ourselves to others so easily. Number one, overwhelming focus on our weaknesses. And sometimes we even see our difference as a weakness. In this world, it's almost a sin to be different. And that is not the case. The reason why we are all not in each other's bodies or in each other's you know, minds, the reason why we are not all one human being is because we're all different. We have different DNAs, we have different hair textures, we have different skin colors, we have different body types, we have different likes, different preferences, different talents, different abilities. We're just so different. And I don't know, but the world has made us think that if we do not fit in, we do not belong but it is our difference that is our power our uniqueness is our power and because we're so used to you know the community mentality or the fitting in mentality we focus on our differences as weaknesses rather than our selling points and that definitely was a struggle for me i'm a very lyrical person i take my lyrics very seriously my music always has this this message behind it. I don't, you know, my genre, my sound, my choice of melody, my choice of words is very different. And I saw that as a weakness because I thought, wow, I wouldn't be able to appeal to the to these sort of people or to this larger audience because of that. But I should have seen that as, oh my goodness, Davina, you can then niche down and get people that absolutely love you and be able to invest in your music no matter what, no matter the price, no matter anything. I didn't see it that way. I thought it was a weakness. And I concentrated on my weaknesses. Another reason is we spend so much time looking at what other people are doing. Oh my God, I spent hours on social media scrolling through people's timelines. I shouldn't have been doing that at all. Number three, growing up, this is a very important point. I actually got this from Jay Shetty's podcast, which I will talk about 
that specific podcast episode and how it changed my life later on in this episode. But basically, you are seldom praised or encouraged or acknowledged for the good that you did growing up, but you were always judged, chastised, condemned or ostracised for the wrong you did. So because you did not because a lot of emphasis was placed on your wrongdoings and your weaknesses and your shortcomings, you hardly celebrated yourself. And I feel like a lot of us can relate to that. Number four, you're not aware of your strengths. Because we are so focused on our weaknesses, we don't even know what our strengths are. We don't even know what our unique abilities are because we're so focused on the things that we can't do or the things that we don't have. The fifth reason is our foundation for our why is shaky or non-existent. Personally, I feel like that is something that I did struggle with because I forgot why I was doing music. I forgot my why. I forgot my mission statement. And because I forgot, I was easily swayed by what other people were doing and what other people were standing for. The sixth reason is we have also been conditioned to value ourselves based on how other people see us than how we are, we see ourselves. I'll say that again. We have also been conditioned to value ourselves based on how others see us and not how we see ourselves. I remember growing up, I used to be told a lot of, you don't want to think, you don't want people to think you are so, so, and so. You don't want them to say you are so, so, and so. I got a lot of that. And I need you to raise your hands yep, raise your hands, if you can relate to hearing the following phrases growing up. Can't you see your mates? Does so-so and so have two heads? Is that what your mates are doing? Why can't you be like so-so and so? Or as my wifey parents would say, if you be some picking, you no go do that kind thing. I got a lot of that growing up. And I started to think, if I'm not like another person, then I'm not good enough. And I don't fault my parents. They were trying to make me do the right thing. But that seeped into into my subconscious and affected different areas of my thinking and different areas of my life. So these are just some of the reasons why we compare ourselves. And in segment two, I will be sharing how I am successfully dealing with this addiction of self-comparison because I can proudly say that as at late last year I stopped checking other people's Spotify numbers I stopped checking on other people's Instagram followers I stopped checking on other people's successes and just fueling unnecessary jealousy I now have a healthier relationship with social media and a relationship with the way I handle other people's successes. I'm being very vulnerable with you guys in this podcast because I feel like this is something that we all struggle with, but nobody wants to be seen as that jealous person. So I hope you hear me out and I hope you learn with me and grow with me. I hope you all learn and grow with me together. This is one of the reasons why I started this podcast in the first place. Okay. On to segment two. So I don't remember if it was 2018 or early 2019 where I stumbled upon the Jay Shetty podcast for the first time. And the very first episode that I listened to was seven ways to stop comparing yourself to others. And when I tell you that the information in that podcast was so transformative for me, I cannot overemphasize that fact and that statement because he mentioned as I said in the title seven ways of you know stopping yourself from comparing yourself to others but there was one particular one that really stood out to me and it came with its own exercise which I did you know carry out and it really helped me so that's the first thing I would talk about in my ways of how I am dealing with self-comparison number one discover your strengths. This came with a strength exercise. So in the exercise, I was supposed to get 10 people whom I trust. So in my family, my friends, my peers in my industry and ask them what my top five strengths are. Was it three to five or just five? I don't remember. 
But then after that, you're supposed to then find the pattern in those strengths. So those strengths include your soft strengths, so your character strengths, and also your um, craft strengths. So what you do for a living, what are your strengths within your craft? And I got a lot of beautiful, positive feedback. And I discovered a pattern. And when I discovered that pattern, it opened my eyes to my strengths because I always overlooked them. I thought that that was just something that everyone could do. But we get blind to that sometimes. Not everyone can do what you can do or as well as you can do it. And then another thing he said, I think it was in a different podcast, was to invest in your strengths. And so I decided to take on songwriting courses rather than, um, you know, try to learn how to sing a different way or, you know, learn how to present myself in a different way. I thought songwriting is my strength. I'm going to focus on that. I'm going to invest in that. And that is one of the best things I could have done for myself. So I stopped and it wasn't overnight, but I stopped focusing on my weaknesses. Another tip was to only focus on your soft weaknesses. So for example, one of my soft weaknesses is that I'm impatient with myself. And that is the only thing that is my weakness that I'm actually working on. Every other thing within my craft, I don't focus on that. I just develop my strengths and I just keep strengthening my strengths. I totally, totally recommend that. It has done so much for my self-confidence because now I'm just focusing on what I'm good at and getting better at that makes me feel invincible sometimes, which is a great contrast to how I was feeling before. The second thing that I had to do was define, redefine what success meant to me. My definition of success became clouded by all the thoughts that I was getting through self-comparison. So I had to settle down and journal and say, okay, what exactly would be success for me in music? Not based on anyone else, but just for me. And I sat down and I wrote those things and I thought, yeah, this is what I want as an artist, not what other people want or not what other people think I should get. This is what I want. And just knowing that and being affirmative in this is what success is to me develop my self-confidence as well another thing that Jay Shetty mentioned in his podcast was to study other people's pains there is something magical about studying other people's pains it's not a petty thing it's just when I started doing that I thought wow yeah actually you can keep that I don't want that because I can't deal with that and that's not me being petty it's just me being real like yo I can't deal with that and so studying other people's pains makes them seem a lot more human and then you start to realize that you're comparing yourself to their highlights and not seeing the full picture of their journey so it's very important to study other people's pains another thing I started doing was I started learning from the people I compare myself to so instead of looking at them with jealousy I started thinking hmm I wonder how they did that I should learn from that so I don't do that very often because I know myself and I know how easily I can relapse. But once in a while, I think, hmm, they've done this. I wonder how I can do that to suit myself in my own way. Another point is to do something small with a very big heart. And for any of you who have been following me, you would know I do monthly voice note newsletters to my supporters. And I and at the end of those voice notes I would have affirmations that is where I got the format for for this podcast and honestly I do that with all my heart and I do that with all my love and I don't think about what other people think about it or what other people you know I don't care how how other people are doing their newsletters I just I take it as my baby and because it's something that I know not a lot of people are doing if anyone is doing it I just take so much pride and love and care and devotion and thought into it. Another thing I started doing was allocating more time to work on my craft, which leads me into the last four things that I started doing that I didn't hear from Jay Shetty's podcast. Social media fasts, 
using the mute button, catching myself doing it, that is comparing myself to others and doing something practical immediately and using affirmations. I started taking long social media fasts. I would take, I would go off social media for a minimum of a month, minimum, not two weeks, not, no, a whole month of social media so that my thumbs can forget how to scroll mindlessly and so that I would lose the taste of being on social media for more than 20 to 40 minutes at a time or per day and what it was is once I started getting off social media for long periods of time as often as I could I started finding that I was allocating more time to work on my craft and because I was so busy working on myself I had no reason to check on other people and fuel unnecessary jealousy and then when I do come back to social media I started using the mute button I muted people because I just didn't want to see anything people may see this as petty but I needed it for my peace of mind and for my mental health I just started muting people not that I hate them it was just something that I needed to do for my own social space and then once I catch myself doing it Maybe after a month of being back on social media, I find that my thumbs are now accustomed to scrolling and I get carried away very easily. As soon as I realise that that is what is going on, I quickly go do something practical. It doesn't have to be music, but it will be something creative. Creating something from scratch, making a a scrapbook or making clothes for my dolls. Yes, I make clothes for my dolls. Yes, I have many dolls and I would just do something. I would cook, I would clean. I would just do something with my hands practical, practically to just not think about going back to a space where I would unconsciously and unnecessarily compare myself to other people. The last thing is I started using tailored affirmations and I wouldn't do it in a way that it was like a ritual. It's just every moment that I remember, I would look in the mirror and say, Davina, you are a badass and you are the only one who does what you do the way you do it. Maya Angelou says success is liking yourself, liking what you do and liking how you do it. That is such a beautiful definition of success. And I actually have that on my wall right now. I'm looking at it and it changed my mindset about these things. I would really recommend social media fasts. I would really recommend you discovering your strengths and focusing on your strengths and doing that strength exercise that I spoke about. Seven Ways to Stop Comparing Yourself by Jay Shetty. It's a podcast episode. Go look out for it and allocate more time to work on your craft. When you're working on yourself, you don't have time to look at other people. And that's what has really helped me. Honestly, the strength exercise, the social media fast, the mute button, that is what I'm doing at the moment. And it has helped me tremendously. Doing something small and giving my all to it. This podcast is just like my voice note newsletter. I do it with all love and devotion and care and thought. And I do it with my heart. And because I'm so focused on it, I don't care what is going on outside of myself in this moment and when people connect with it. Do you know what I mean? And that is that. Thank you so much for listening all the way to this point of this podcast episode. I hope it has been of some value to you. I hope you can take something away from it. I hope you start using these in your own life and in your own struggle if you do have one with self-comparison. You can connect with me on all social media platforms at Davina Oriaki. You can send me an email at hey at DavinaOriaki.com and in the subject line, just type in podcast. Send me a DM on Instagram at Davina Oriaki. Tweet at me at Davina Oriaki using the hashtag LLA with Davina. I really love engaging with you. I love learning from you and I love to hear your feedback on these podcast episodes. So don't be a stranger. I end this podcast with closing affirmations, which focuses on self-esteem and self-worth. I ask that you repeat these affirmations after me. 
and you really close your eyes and concentrate and believe what you are saying. Breathe in and breathe out and receive. I am here. I am important. My life matters. I am here for a reason. I am clear of my purpose. I am clear of my calling. I am a strong, independent individual. I have unique individual strengths. I am successful. I am unique. I am important. I am my own person. I am focused. I know who I am and what I stand for. I commit to trusting the process day in, day out. I embrace my journey because it is uniquely designed for me. Comparison is the thief of joy, so I dismiss all thoughts that entertain feelings of comparison. Insecurity has no place in my heart and mind. Jealousy has no place in my heart and mind. I am smart. I am beautiful, inside and out. I am talented, I am loved. I know what I am good at, and I am exceptional at what I do. Another person's success, talents, gifts, wealth, relationships, and or opportunities have no bearing on me or my potential. I genuinely celebrate the success of others. I support my friends and loved ones who are doing well. I am grateful for my life, my talents and my journey. I am kind to myself and my development. I give myself permission to embrace all sides of me and trust that I am enough. I will turn the negative feeling of jealousy into inspiration. I am progressing. No matter the pace and no matter the speed, I am resistant to outside influence. I overcome bursts of low self-esteem. I am confident. I restrain from comparing myself to others. I develop accurate beliefs about myself. I appreciate my unique characteristics. I understand that differences are good. My uniqueness is my selling point. My difference is my power. I am always able to ignore negative thoughts. My present situation does not define me or my destiny. I am on the path that is best for me right now. What is for me will come to me. What is for me will come to me. I am awesome. I am badass, I am confident, I am enough, I am worthy. Thank you so much for being with me here today. Remember you can listen to the affirmations part of this podcast as many times as you need to. Keep affirming yourself, keep reminding yourself that you are worthy and enough and badass remember you can download this episode on from divinaoriaki.com forward slash podcast thank you so much once again for being here with me and i cannot wait to be with you again